Yes, yeah, so Laura, we just welcome you to There's More Podcast. Laura is a um, a great friend of Rachel and I's. So we love when we have these kind of conversations. <laughs> we don't always get to have it with our, our good friends. Yeah. But um, Laura works with the Be Still Woodstock team. And, and you and I have sat down, you know, a couple different times. And I... I, I'm just excited for you guys to hear Laura's story because what emanates from Laura, in my opinion, is freedom and joy. And I know that that has not always been your story, right, Laura? So um, right. just welcome to the podcast. And, and, and let's Thank just, you. we're going to jump right in. <laughs> I, can you just kind of tell them um, just a little bit about your journey, how you got to Atlanta, how you got into the seat that you're sitting in of being in Be Still Woodstock and knowing God's love in the way that you do now, because yeah. it's so beautiful. Okay, so my story starts, um, I was actually adopted at seven days old um, in Chicago, by who I call mom and dad, uh, raised in a Catholic family, um, Italian Catholic family, <laughs> huge Italian Catholic family. You and the um, part, though. I, mean, I let's know. Be <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, as a young girl, like felt unconditionally loved for mom and dad. Um, as I got older, in my early teens, you know, that kind of changed with my dad. I, I'm not sure if it was him or just my eyes, you know, and yeah. feelings. But it, it was like I had to do, you know, had to perform for him to be proud, to love me, better grades, you know. And growing mm -hmm. up Catholic, it was a lot about works and, you know, that. So I think I got it from from both, you know, that. And so when I thought of God, I thought of him the same way I thought of my earthly dad. Yeah. Like, you know, if I did something wrong, he'd turn his back on me. If, you know, pointing his finger, you shouldn't have done that um, at age. And so I just struggled with that. I knew God, but I didn't have a relationship with him, you know. Um, and at age 36 is when I became a Christian. Um, I got saved watching Charles Stanley one night late. Oh my gosh! I love <laughs> it. So I mean, and on the TV, it's like watching Billy Graham. People yeah. who just kneel in their the den. Yeah. I'm like, wow, that is amazing. Right. Well, it's so funny how it happened too. So, age 36, growing up in Chicago, we would have girls' nights and we would play poker and drink and smoke. And, uh huh. And, you know, and so one night we were having a girls night. I've never had a girls night where we played poker. <laughs> yeah, me either. I'm like, I don't even know which one's the, the spade. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, and so one of my friends said, Laura, have you ever heard of this pastor named Charles Stanley? And growing up in the Catholic church, I was like, no, you know, I don't. Yeah. She's like, he's really interesting. You know, she was Greek Orthodox. So she's like, he's really interesting. He makes what? the Bible easy to learn. She's Aww. like, you should listen to him. And I'm like, okay. And so one night I was struggling at this time being sick, going back and forth to doctors. They thought I had lymphoma. And I was up late one night. It was like three in the morning because I was hurting. And I had the TV on. I was scrolling through the channels. And here's this older man with gray hair. And it says, Dr. Charles Stanley, First Baptist Church, Atlanta. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is the guy Mary was talking about. So I'm listening to him. And at the end, he asks if you want to pray the sinner's prayer. And I'm like, I don't know what that is, but okay. And so I prayed it. And literally the next morning, it was like, I stopped cussing. Girl, that was hard. Oh, wow. <laughs> and and uh, as you tell, have told me the story, like it just went away. Like it was just part it of was, your vernacular, like using the word the. Yeah. Right? What? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The F word was an adjective. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> well, I don't guess I need to I pray the, the sinner's F prayer for that. <laughs> but. <laughs> but you were del literally so, delivered from cussing, right? You didn't try wow. to stop. I just think it's so. No, it just stopped it, yeah it was like gone like e even like when i'd go to work like the ladies i did nails they'd be like what's wrong you're so quiet like oh. i wasn't cussing i wasn't gossiping i'm like <laughs> i literally have nothing to say oh my <laughs> that goodness i love that yeah. yeah and so like probably two weeks after i got saved um i felt like the lord said to move to georgia and my husband was like, okay, what? You've been saved for two weeks and we're going to move the whole family to Georgia. I'm like, I really feel like we're supposed to. And so we 
put the for sale sign on the house. It was 2007 when there was a recession and it sold in two weeks. And we picked our house in Georgia online and just moved. I came here. <laughs> <laughs> that is like i mean charles is up in heaven like well that is awesome <laughs> that's so cool that's amazing and oh so laura gosh. why do you why did he bring you here what was that about i really think he brought me here um I just, my mom had passed away and so and, and my dad had gotten remarried and I think he just knew I needed something different. And so I think he brought me here and he brought me to, I went from the Catholic church to an assembly of God church, oh, wow, um, which was really different. Wow. Right. Like, talk about two ends of the spectrum. Yeah. And, um, I just, I just think it was because he knew like what he had planned next, you know, yeah. like being, being here is how my oldest son learned about youth with the mission, yeah. YWAM. And then he went, and, you know, and so I just think that I I had to be here for the rest of my plan to play out. Right. Basically. I mean, we always say moves are total setups Set up. by God. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like no oh, clearer yeah, picture than yours. It's just amazing. Yeah. So what happened next, Laura? How did you begin to because being a, a, you know, a baby Christian, a newborn believer, what did you begin to realize? I think, you know, it's funny. We talk about freedom a lot, and that's how we kind of started this conversation. And yet, I remember when people would talk about freedom and the Lord, I, I remember thinking, well, I don't even know what you're, what that means. Because like, a lot of times, you don't even know the bondage you're in. You don't even realize that that is bondage. Right. You just think that's a normal way of thinking or a normal way of believing what were some of the things that God began to, you know, expose in your life that he was saying, I want to heal and I want to set you free from? Yeah. So I think when I first became a Christian and then, you know, it, that was like in November and then moved out to Georgia in June and started going to an AG church. And, you know, I didn't learn the gospel of grace. It was, it was more like, you know, I felt like I had a relationship with the Lord, but then it was more like, oh, I have to do this Bible study and I have to be a youth leader yeah. and I have to do this and yeah. I have to do that in order, you know, so it, was, it became performance and yeah. striving. Um, and also um, when I was 20 years old, I had an abortion and never felt freedom from that. That yeah. was like my, like my secret. I didn't share with any, anyone. And um one day while cleaning, I was listening to worship music. I think I was probably like in my early 40s. And I just crumbled and got to the floor and just on my knees. And I was like, Lord, I can't do this anymore. Like, mm -hmm. I asked for forgiveness on Wednesdays. I asked for forgiveness on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And oh, I don't goodness. feel any different. Yeah, Like, I still feel the shame. I still feel the condemnation, you know, at church, pastor says, you know, you throw our sins as far as the east is from the west. Like, why aren't I feeling that? You know? Right. And I just felt like the Lord said, I, I forgave you, Laura, the day you were on the table yeah. having your abortion. Mm. You have not forgiven yourself. Oh, yeah. Man. And so I just cried out in that moment, asked God, to, you know, to forgive me again, asked my baby to forgive me, mm. forgave myself. Um, and it was just like a moment of freedom there. And then after that, I was able to share. Mm. And I think that's the biggest thing is like, I feel like freedom comes in layers, you I know? Too. And I feel it's every time I share my story, or many parts of my, my story, I feel a new level of freedom, a sure. new level of boldness and confidence. And so, yeah, I feel like just being here and sharing that has has made me more open to sharing. Yeah, if that makes sense. <laughs> well, it's you know, yeah. freedom. It, it's it is weird how that works. That the more we testify to our own freedom, and the more we keep letting the light in, the more we keep telling the story, because we have both experienced mm -hmm. that. There mm -hmm. is so much healing in our own. Like you and I were talking last night, hearing our own story and having to go back mm -hmm. and refresh yourself in your own story of God's goodness and the way he's pursued your heart. Yeah. It's amazing how it continues to unearth freedom in your own life, even as you're giving it away to others, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. 
Well, and you remember and recall, I think, different aspects of it as you become, as you heal a little bit more, you yeah. you remember, like, I think the Lord just refreshes your memory. He adds another layer to the healing to share the next time. I mean, it's like, I remember stuff right. all the time that happened 17 years ago that I have totally forgotten, but it's, it's to give away. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not necessarily it's it's for my own healing to and then to give away which is just so cool i mean yeah. it's like it never it never ends it's like the word to me our stories are like the word right you know they never right. come back void and it's endless like yeah. i could we could never get to the end of the word like, that's right we'll never get to the end of its goodness to the right. end of like oh i know it all i mean <laughs> Like, no, you will never get there. So, Laura, I know like the past few years have been what I what I believe. And don't let me put words in your mouth, but have been mm-hmm. the biggest transformation where you really have made this leap from a, a rule based. I'm going to follow the right. I'm going to do the good Christian girl things. I'm going to live this life. God's called me to live to really experiencing what I would say probably is like a deeper level of intimacy with him. In fact, I heard you say, it's like he literally took my eyeballs out of my head and gave me a new set of eyes. What did you mean when you, when you said that? Can you tell us more about that? Um, I feel like, you know, in 2018, when I went, so in 2018, the Lord spoke to me and my husband and my two younger boys to uh, sell everything, our home and shut down the business and move to Kona, Hawaii and do youth at the mission, do a DTS discipleship training school. And then we were in Nepal for three months. Um, During that time, I learned more about hearing God's voice and um, had few encounters with the Lord that were just like nothing I've ever experienced before. Mm. Um, but when he called us back to Georgia, I was like, what? Mm-hmm. Why? Why are you calling me back to Georgia? I'm like, I'm supposed to be a missionary for the rest of my life. Why wow. are you doing this? Um, and so I, re- I remember actually taking a picture of myself because when he f- first spoke it to me, I said, no. I said, this is literally the first time I'm going to be disobedient in what you've asked. I actually took a picture because I was ugly crying. I'm mm. sorry, I lost AirPod. I was ugly crying, and I was like, I need to take a picture of this because I want to remember like what this <laughs> face of disobedience oh looks like. This is what it disobedience was... looks like, Laura. <laughs> that like, is Selfie. classic. Stop. I'll show you one day, guys. Oh I'm my gosh. <laughs> so <laughs> that is hysterical. And so I felt like we were supposed to move back, and so we ended up moving back in 2021. And I remember being on a run and being like, oh, I, like, this is why, what did you call me back for? Like wow. to go back to working medical, to go back to, you know, working, saving money, going on vacation and working. I'm like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm like, and literally probably like two weeks later, one of my friends that I used to go to church with invited me to be still. She was going to share a testimony about her son and I couldn't make it, but I ended up coming to the next one by myself. And it was just something different. Like I walked into the room and I was like, oh my gosh, like this is like a safe place. Like (laughs) I feel seen, I feel loved. I feel like no comparison from any of the other women here. Mm, This is like, oh my gosh, there's Mm. just something different about this. And so then I came back the next time and the next time. And then they had like a meeting at Amanda's house. And I went to that about serving and they were sharing like the vision. And I was literally bawling because I was like, oh my gosh, these are them. These are the women. (laughs) Uh When I left Kona, I had a great group of women friends. And I was like, Lord, I need that. I need that back. And did I know he was going to like, it was going to be even better than what I asked? Absolutely not. But Mm. he's like that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so um, I ended up doing father's house and y'all, I can't thank both of you enough (laughs) for being obedient Mm. and for your yes to writing father's house, because it literally changed my life. Mm. Like the God that I thought, was the God I knew is Mm -hmm. not who he is, Mm -hmm. you know, in the first, um, 
Mm -hmm. session where you guys say like when God was looking for Adam and Eve in the garden, you know, <laughs> what did his voice sound like? And that week to me, his voice was, what are you doing? Yeah. Get over here. Why did you do that? You know? Yeah. And then as the sessions kept going on, it was like, no, like that's not God. That's yeah. not who God is. Yeah. He's a loving God. He loves us. He wants to care for us. And you know, the whole Papa thing, <laughs> I had a really hard time with the Papa thing. I know a lot of people. You and many people. You and lots of others. <laughs> but I just have to share the story because it's crazy. So like every time I would read that word Papa, I'd be like, mm. <laughs> so one day I go visit my dad who's in a memory care unit. And you know how I said growing up, I always felt like I had to perform. Yeah like with my dad. And so every time I would go visit him, I have to say it was like something I felt like I had to do. It was, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't like something like, Oh, I can't wait to see my dad. You know, yeah. it was like, I felt like I need to go see him this week. So one day after father's house, I usually make the appointment like days before, but I'm like, got in the car and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to call and see if my dad's available. I'm going to go visit him. So I went to go visit my dad. And as soon as they wheel him out, the nurse says, Papa, your daughter's here. And oh, I'm like, wow. Stop it. I was like, wait, what? Why did she just call him Papa? I'm like, this is weird. I've never heard her say that. And I was wow. like, okay. And so then I'm talking to my dad and she comes back and she's like, do you want me to take a picture of you and your Papa? And I'm like, what? What is happening? Wow. And so she, I'm like, sure. <laughs> so she takes a picture of us and then you know, I share with my dad things that are happening in the family. At the end of the conversation, I say, Dad, is there anything else you want to know about? And he says, I want to know about Laura. And my mom's name was Laura, but she's passed away. And I said, you, you want to know about mom? And he said, no, I want to know about you. Tell me about what? you. And I thought, this is the first time wow. in my life that I felt like he actually, like, oh, wanted to know Hi. about me. Wanted wow. me. Yeah, I got in the car, and I was bawling. And wow. I was like, God, this is what I said. Lord, thank you so much for changing my dad. And the Lord said, Laura, your dad is not changed. I've given you him. I've given you new eyes Ugh. to see him in the world with. Wow. And it was ever since then, guys, when I go visit my dad, it is the most special thing. I cry every time. He cries. He tells me he loves me. He hugs me. We dance together with arms while he's in his wheelchair. Wow. It is just father's house has wow. changed my life. Like nothing has ever changed my life before. So thank you both of you for your love. Wow. wow. It's Sweet. him it's who he is yeah yeah for those of you that are listening you're like what's she talking about that's just a, a eight-week bible study that that um god wrote i mean right god wrote it through me and rachel but but it's in just spite a, of us yeah really. in spite of us yeah <laughs> and it's just a you know a journey if you're someone like laura that needs new eyes to see father god as papa you know like the, so the reason when she's saying papa there's the kind of the lead scripture is um, where he talks about the resurrection life you've get, he's given us. And it's a adventurously expectant life where we get to say, what's next, Papa? And so that's where we refer to him as Papa. And Laura, we actually, um, the, I remember there was a girl early on when the workbook first came out and, and the word Papa is used a lot in the workbook. And she said she had to go through the entire workbook and scratch out the word <laughs> Papa and write Father because it was so offensive to her. Mm -hmm. And and I, you know, I, I just want to say to people who like even hearing Laura maybe say that, that yeah. sounds like, gosh, you shouldn't call him Papa. You know, it's just another way of saying, I mean, Abba is a, you know, a Hebrew term of affection. And and, and let that, I think that it's important for people to know that we're all on a journey of experiencing Father God in different ways, you know, it, it, for you and I and, and Rachel, we all had this journey that God took us on to discover the his kindness as as a loving father. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of us approach Jesus and he feels very safe. He's the one that died on the cross for us and, and he's very approachable. Father God is the one that can seem a little more distant. And and so for you who are listening, if you feel like, yeah, I agree, he does seem like the the little little more distant, angry one, Father's house might be a good place for you to start where 
because he does want to give, you know, to give us new eyes. I'd love to know, Laura, for you, you know, now that he's kind of given you this new lens where like I can see you've experienced his love in a different way. How's that changed like your family? How's it changed? Because, you know, it's like when you get free, the whole family gets to benefit from it. How have you seen that kind of impact your family life and how you do family? Well, and just know, like, I mean, just to pause on that, because, I mean, you were like a missionary. Like, let's not forget. Like, it's not like you hadn't laid your life down and, you know, I mean, surrendered. Your kids saw that. But yet this view was still the coding, like the cataract on your vision, you know? Yeah, so <clears throat> I think the biggest thing that my family could see is the difference in how I pray. Like, I pray differently. I'm no longer um, at asking, God, please, if it's your will, would you heal my thumb? Right. No. It, now it's like I declare yeah. that my thumb is healed. Yeah. You know, so I think that would be the hugest thing. Also, um, there's no more like religious spirit. Like there's no more like, you know, you can't wear that to church or you have to go to church every Sunday. You know what I mean? That's gone. Thank you, God. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But I I would say that would be the most, the most that my family has seen is just a different way of praying. Um, I take communion every day Mm. um, and just lead that and, and just more boldness. Like, um, something happened during deeper still when I came in, um, yeah. when we did the, he speaks week. Um, and if I'm being honest, I've never wanted or, you know, thought about hearing the audible voice of God, because I always thought it would be like a, you know, I can't believe you did that again, Laura, you know, you're not supposed to do that. That's what the voice would be. So, but during that week that I came to deeper still, it was on hearing the voice of God and hearing him in different ways, you know, through sense or, you know, visions, dreams. Um, and Karen was about to do an activation and she started the music and, you know, we all just like bowed our heads and I put my head down and I just heard the sweetest whisper in a man's voice. And he said, Laura, and I was like, Oh my goodness. That was literally the Lord's voice. And it wasn't a Laura. What are you doing? It was a Laura. It was a whisper. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I don't know if you guys remember, but when you're like, does anybody want to share? I'm like, I need to share because the enemy right now is saying that was not what you heard. You didn't hear that. But I know that I know that I know that it was the Lord. Yeah. Ever since then, there is just this new boldness where you know, if like I told Karen last night, we were at church a couple Sundays ago and I was like, our third song, I'm sorry, our third song of worship pastor will say, if anyone wants to come up for prayer. And as soon as he said that, I felt like we need to go up and pray for the Muslim community. So I tapped my husband and, and normally I'd be like, ah, I don't want to go, you know, but it's like, I tapped my husband and we went up and I'm like, guys, I feel like we're supposed to pray for the Muslim community. So all four of us prayed, and then like two or three days later, my son and his wife and their two kids, my grandsons, are missionaries in the Middle East. And a few days later, he called me and said, Mom, the coolest thing happened. We met these two guys. They were Muslim. We started talking to them about Jesus. They gave their lives to the Lord, he said. And then a few days later, we invited them over to our house. and We were going to talk to them. I don't know where the two men work, but they didn't get off till midnight. So they waited up for them. And when they came, they just were telling them more about Jesus. And telling them, and they ended up baptizing them in their bathtub in their house. And, that's so oh, and I was like, gosh. Lord, thank you. Like, it could have been me being obedient to him saying, go go yeah all four of you go and pray for the muslim community so ever since that happened at deeper still with hearing the lord's voice audibly it's just this new thing in that he's done where it's like there's no more fear of man like it's oh, like it's gone wow isn't Goodness. that cool i mean laura holy cow yeah. laura can you talk a little bit about hard seasons because it hasn't been 
you know, missionary. I mean, like <laughs> signing up for a life that you've signed up for, uh, you know, is not easy. And so can you talk through how you see the hard seasons now, like on the other side of grace? Like what, how has that reframed even the hard things that you're going through or have been through? So I think like hard seasons, <clears throat> before I would just, you know, it would be like constant worry, mm -hmm. like constant go to bed and worry about that thing and literally can't sleep and stay up for hours laying in bed thinking about that thing. Where now it's like, I know it's not staying there. I know the hardship is not staying there. I know it's just a season. Yeah. And I know that when I come out of it, I will have learned something in that season. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. for the better. Do you know what I mean? Like oh, God yeah. will always teach me something in, in the hardship. Yeah. You know, like there is going always. to be good out of this. Yeah. Always. Yeah. 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 There's always good. Yeah. Always. Versus like the worry, which doesn't change the situation at all ever. No, but yeah, absolutely. It, somehow. Yeah. That's my thing is like, stop with the what ifs because the what ifs never happen. Mm -hmm. And our mind's just like, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if this? And it's like, but what if it doesn't? Right. Yeah. Right. Which it usually doesn't. <laughs> what know? if it turns out better than you could have dreamed? You know, we Absolutely. never do the what if it's better. We always think, well, what if it's worse? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. the queen of what if, <laughs> what, what if it's worse? Yeah. I'm being totally honest. <laughs> And I'm trying to learn, you know, to to do that. But it's so sweet when he comes in and just rewires your thinking, which I think that's what I see a lot in you is just the rewiring of your thinking, mm -hmm. you know. So, Laura, one of the things that you and I talked about yesterday was um, years ago, the Lord had given you a prophetic word and you were saying like, like, what is the thing that Lord is really t emphasizing to you now when it comes to the prophetic and about stewarding those words? Yeah. So <clears throat> I just think it's really important if you have a dream or a vision or someone gives you a word to write it down, mm -hmm. whether it's in your Bible or your phone or because it just, I tear up thinking about this, but I've, mm. I've read, a, I have a few words that are like 12 years old Yeah, that are in my Bible when I first became a Christian that, you know, basically say for me sharing my story that I will change women's lives. Mm -hmm. And I've always, you know, I've always read that like yearly, like usually around New Year's Eve, I'll ask the Lord, what yeah. are your words for this year? And, and I'll, I'll go back and read words that I've gotten. And it's like, wow, 12 years later, wow. yeah, it's happening. You know, yeah. I'm sharing my story. I'm talking to women, you know, and, and, and so like, that's, that's like the message, like share your story, yeah. share your story. And, and because when we share our story, we get more freedom other women hear it, then they feel empowered to share their story. Mm -hmm. And then it's like a snowball effect, right? You know, it's like women, I feel like there's so many women in the church that are living in shame and condemnation. Yeah. Because they haven't shared their story. Mm -hmm. And to mm -hmm. think like what God, the Lord could do through them yeah. once they let it out that one time. Because yeah. it's yeah. like once you let it out, it's no longer in the darkness. Now That's it's right. in the light. So, so Satan back off, right? Yeah. And now I'm, I'm getting that freedom. So I just feel like it's so important to write down what the Lord has said and to to share your story whenever you know you have the chance to share it, even though it can be really super freaking scary. <laughs> share it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Laura, what would you want someone to know who, you know, does feel like they've gotten, you know, this big word from the Lord? Like so that took, you know, a, over a decade of you stewarding that. What would you say to someone who feels like they have a promise that seems unattainable or that it's never coming to pass, what would you want them to know? I would say to just read it as often as you can, declare it, it will come to pass. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Lord's, yes, he's, I mean, you know, I yeah. just feel like it will come to pass yeah. and, and to not forget it. Don't ever forget it. Always yeah. remember it. I have some that I'm like, 
you know, someone saw me like birthing and a pass in a line for passports and in Germany. And I'm like, I don't, but you know what? I will keep reading it. And yes. I will keep, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so. I think, you know, too, like, Mm. Uh, you know, you said, thank God he didn't bring that to pass sooner is that I think what I would want people to know about that, because, you know, for me, I, I you know, had dreams of speaking w- when that was still the thought of public speaking was I yeah. had such a fear of man that that was like a tormenting dream almost. You know what I mean? But it was very vivid. And it wasn't until many years later, he said, no, that actually was was from me. And that was for you. But there was the process. There was the journey you know, that I had to go through that all of the healing that was still and still is taking place, but so much of Mm -hmm. the lenses that he needed to change in my life, the the truth, the lies that needed to be unearthed, the roots that needed to be, you know, drawn out. And that's, I think a lot of times when he gives you these big visions of your future, that that's the invitation to steward a journey too, you know, and, and Absolutely. That's, the, that's the hard part. Yeah. We don't want that, you mm-hmm. know? Right. Because when I think about like that prophetic word and I think about like, if that would have happened like during any different time in my life, yeah, that would have come out of a place of Laura wanting the glory. Yeah. Mm. And not, you know, because I was in a place of striving and performance and, that would not have been a good thing. And the Lord knew. So the Lord knew she needs to go on this journey. (laughs) And then, you know, yeah. So exactly exactly what you said, like it's, I believe it'll come to pass, but it's when it's his time and his time is way better than ours. Yes, totally. Laura, will you pray for people who are, walking in um just that cataract like that's just the word that i keep hearing like it's just that cloudy vision of who god is that cloudy vision of their future because i i i don't know that whole move to georgia thing you've done that twice you've heard his voice twice and so i just i don't know for people who are like the next step and they're just their their brokenness is coming from their identity and you know i don't know just that whole mashup of okay. just how you see yourself <laughs> and how you see yourself moving and operating in new territory i think that's the other thing too because you know obviously god has just given you and just continues to give you new territory and it didn't look like the mission mm-hmm. it looked like the mission field of of Georgia, <laughs> which wasn't quite what you thought, mm-hmm. you know, which is well, crazy. it's funny. Be- yeah. During the uh, father's house, we were doing a time of prayer and he actually, cause I was saying how sad I was that I was no longer doing missionary work. And he actually spoke and said, um, I've called you to be a missionary to Cherokee County. So. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh that. my God. What if we all had that yeah. thought? I know, honestly, so good. Um, <laughs> Because really, you don't have to go to another country to be a missionary. Uh, you don't. You <laughs> totally don't. Okay. Well, you pray, Laura. Thank you so much. I will. This is amazing. Thank you. Mm, thank you, Papa. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share what you have done, Lord. I'm not special. You can do this in anyone's life, Lord, and you will. So I pray for everyone listening, God, who's dealing with shame or condemnation or guilt, God. I just pray, Lord, would you show them who that safe person is that they can share their secret with. If they already know that person, Lord, highlight them to that person, Lord, so that they know that they're a safe place, God. And I just pray after sharing, Lord, that they will feel freedom, God. I pray for eyes that, like Rachel said, have like cataracts on them. God, would you take that film off? And let the eyes be clear, Lord. Mm. Let let everyone listening, Lord, see who you truly are, Papa. You are a God who loves us. Mm -hmm. You love us so much more than anyone could ever love us, Lord. Mm -hmm. You don't turn your backs on us. You're with us. Mm. You walk right beside us, Lord, holding our hand, God. You are with us all the time. You're our best friend. You want to hear from us constantly, Lord, like we Mm -hmm. do with our best friends, Lord. I just thank you so much. I pray for... Anyone who's listening who is um, feels like God is calling them somewhere to the next step, next journey, Lord, 
I just pray that you give them the confidence, the boldness to step out and to do it, even though it seems scary, Lord, because love is the root, obedience is the fruit, God. Mm -hmm. I thank you so much for Rachel and Karen, God. I thank you for their yes, because it has changed my life and it has changed so many other women's lives, Lord. We love you, Papa. We worship you. Mm -hmm. We are so thankful mm -hmm. for how you love us because you love us so well. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Oh, Laura, thank you so much. Love you, girl. We love you.